And here's where we stop bothering to number the movies with the Amityville Curse. I'm not even sure why they even bothered calling it an Amityville movie. The only reason it has to justify it is that it takes place in Amityville, the same town as the original house, but otherwise having nothing to do with it. Why the hell would people still live in this town when it has not one, but two haunted houses? And again, this barely qualifies as a haunted house. I was actually really looking forward to this one because, as I said, I am a fan of haunted house stories, and the Amityville sequels focusing on objects from the house are just kinda silly. But no, while the house is haunted, the focus of the movie is on an actual killer, not the house screwing with them. I mean, the house does seem to be screwing with them at one or two points, but really there isn't any point to it. And oh yeah, it's another boring Amityville movie, though not quite as bad as the third one. The movie begins with a priest getting murdered in the confession booth, reminds me of Exorcist 3, a much better movie, and I've just gotta ask, how many priests does Amityville have running around? I mean, I don't think Amityville was ever really a small town, but with as many priests as we see in these movies, you've gotta start scratching your head. Several years later, a man and his wife buy up a house in Amityville that needs a lot of work, recruiting some friends of his who move in? It's not clear exactly, but then again, calling them friends is a little bit of an overstatement, since they all seem to dislike one another, and particularly the guy who bought them the house. Then again, he's kind of a dick too, particularly towards his wife. She's been having psychic visions for a while now, but he and her therapist write her off as crazy, to the point where she writes down her dreams as soon as she has them into a diary to be examined later. Here's the long and short of the plot. This guy, who kind of looks like the cinema snob back when he first started out and was beardless, murdered the priest at the beginning because the priest was actually his biological father, who had abandoned his mother years earlier. Of course, it's not really a justification to kill anybody. Really, it's just that he's frickin' insane. He starts killing the others for no reason, and the last act of the movie is him hunting the psychic lady throughout the house while he gets stabbed, shot with a nail gun, acid, I think, thrown in his face. Actually, the funniest part of the movie is right here. When I first saw this, it was so dark that I thought that it had gone into his crotch, which would have redeemed this movie a hell of a lot. Admittedly, it's still funny, what with the lack of music and the screaming and pained expressions he keeps making, and what the hell does it take to kill this guy, seriously? But saw blade to the crotch would have been funnier. When the guy finally dies, the spirit of the priest ejects from the house because... I have no idea. This is a dumb, boring movie. Probably the most annoying thing about it is this old woman who keeps coming into the house. She worked with the priest and apparently has gone completely insane since then. She goes in and out of the house without permission and everyone is just flabbergasted by her and never insists that she leave, as if crazy people going into their house is the most natural thing in the world to them. Like the third movie, this one is best skipped. There isn't a lot of entertainment value and all the characters piss you off. The Amityville Curse. There is no curse, and it barely has anything to do with Amityville. <laughs>